Hello everyone, I'm Alicia. Welcome to my Beautiful Nights channel. This video is a continuance of part one, and if you didn't see part one, it is a must watch because you're not going to understand what's going on in this one if you didn't see part one. So I will link part one down there below in the description bar so you can go and see it in case you missed it. And in part one, I showed you guys how to bezel this ceramic cabochon right here that I want to use in a bracelet. Basically, my bracelet design is going to have this as the centerpiece, and then this here on the side, I'm going to be making the sister one that will sit right here next to this. So, it, basically, this here is going to be repeated over here to make my bracelet. Now, for this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make this one here. This can be made into a ring if you want to. Um, I will have links down there in the description bar to the materials I used to make this. I did make this here with a box, and I talked about that in part one, so go and watch that because this video is going to be extremely long if I go over all that information again. So um, for this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to make this component. Now if you do want this to be a ring, I recommend that you add two more feet to this in order to make the ring band. Here is the list of materials you will need to make this pink component. You will need to cut four feet of eight pound fire line. You're also going to need a size 10 beading needle, 18 by 13 millimeter Preciosa Fancy Stone Oval, 8 6 millimeter check fire polish beads, 8 3 millimeter check fire polish beads, 11 0 Miyuki seed beads in two colors. So I have dark bronze and this pretty turquoise color here, and 15 0 Miyuki seed beads. This is the list of materials. And remember, I will put the list down there below in the description bar, bead counts, links, all that info. We're going to start by picking up all eight of my six millimeter check fire polish beads. Six, seven, and eight. Okay, like this. Slide these down. We're going to leave a shorter tail on this because this is such a small piece. We don't really need a six inch tail, so I went with five. So right here, I forgot, I was not in frame. I'm measuring my tail. Right here, we got five inches. Hold right here at this mark. Grab it there, slide these down. Take the needle, pass through all of these beads. Okay, I went through all eight, and pulling this down, we are making a circle. Okay, once you have your five inch tail, you're going to want to tie a surgeon's knot, so over and under once. Make sure that you have a good shape there, over and under twice. Bring that down, pull that tight. Okay, leave your tail alone, take your needle, and pass through the next bead. So, we just did the back. We're now going to create the wall for our cab to go in, like we did with this. We put our cab in, and then we do this fancy beaded lace, I guess I would call it, going around the outer edge there. Alright, so I'm going to pick up a 3 millimeter, 4 11 -0 seed beads, and a 3 millimeter, like this. I'm going to go back through where I started and then through the next six millimeter. Kind of like that one. Okay, just this time we only have these in our base and for this one we had to do more here to support that cabochon. So all of these are actually kind of made similar and I think that you'll get a lot of inspiration and ideas watching this video because all of these are kind of similar 
but then they're not. There's things that are different about them. So I just went ahead and picked up a 3mm and 4.11s this time. I don't have to pick up two because I'm going to be sharing this 3mm with this one here. I'm going through this 3mm, this 6mm, and through the next one to reposition myself to start the next row. And I'm going to fold this up like this. Okay? And I just grab my beads there, make sure it's tight. Hold it like this. I'm going to pick up another three and four elevens. I'm going to go through this three, through this six, and through the next six. Okay, and again I stop. See how this got loose on me? Like you could see my little, see that thread there? So what I do is I pull this tight, okay, with that hand, and then I go like this, pull that tight, pull that tight, pull that tight. Because sometimes it loosens up on us. And so I always check. Pick up a three and four elevens. Like this. Go through this three, through this six here, and reposition by passing through the next six. Now what you can do before pulling all this through is pull this tight, make sure your walls are standing up, and then pull this like that, but I, I still like to go back and check, make sure that's all tight, and then we do this again, and I do this all the way around until I get back to my start, so I will fast forward. That's the last three millimeter that I'm putting right there. I'm going to stop, make sure this is tight. Okay, and then I'm going to sew up through this three millimeter. And then pick up four elevens, one last time on the top here. And I'm going to sew down through this three millimeter to close the top through this six millimeter, up through this three millimeter, okay, and then, oh that looks good, okay, and then I'm going to go through these elevens right here. Now I, I have to say that this pink one, this one here, the oval one, I fussed with this this component more than any of the other opponents components. I took this apart and had to remake it so many times. I was having a lot of problems with it. And I kind of want to say I was having problems because it is oval shaped. Because the round ones were just easy breezy. So I'm just making sure everything's tight there. Now what I'm going to do is put one 15 seed bead in between all of these here. But before I do that, I do need to, I think I had tightened this up, right? I've done this so many, yeah, I did. Yeah, I, I've made this so many different ways, it's crazy. So I'm going to put my stone in now, okay, and it just pops right in, like that. Now, this is important, I have to hold this down and pass through all of these 11s. They're all going to come together and pull tight around this stone. So I'm going to pass through all that I can in one shot so I get through about eight at a time. Okay, go in this direction. Yep, about eight at a time. Okay, so you can see pulling it, how it gets tighter there. I have this gap and this one I go through. So just go complete circle around the stone. And this right here is where I started. See that thread that's going through those seed beads? So let's see. I'm going in this direction. I'm going to pull this tight. I'm actually at the bottom here. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up 15 O's and I'm going to put them 
right here. So basically what we just did was make this really tight around here to keep the stone in, but now I have to put this seed bead in. This little seed bead, I tried doing this with 11s, it didn't work, but this one here, that's the one we're putting in right there. This is this seed bead is going to make it so we can do this netting all around the edge. Okay, so that bead there, pull it, and then pick up another, put it in this gap here, go through four beads, and every time you add another bead, make sure you pull it tight because you do not want your stone to fall out. And I just go all the way around putting a 15 -0 in between the four 11s. And then right here, I'm gonna go d through, wait, 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 wait. I'm going to go through just these 11s and try to avoid going through that 15. Hmm. Okay, there we go. I went around it. Now, what I did... Does it still work? Yes, it does. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Let me see. I was actually, when I first designed this, I did it with a six pound monofilament, which worked, but they do have different results. I'm trying to get this to go around, but I might not be able to. Let me see. I'm trying to spin the beads. Oh, almost got it. Okay, I'm in the right spot. Yeah, so basically I just spun them to go around my stone just a little bit. Okay, now pulling this tight, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to drop down into this 6mm and I'm going to make a support to go across the back right here. Now, my paranoia kicked in and it always does when I'm beating because I'm always trying to make things be very strong, durable, I want it to last a lifetime. So I made a support back here because you could see how that kind of spun around and also if I do make the bracelet where I, I put it in this way, if I connect to the center bead here on each side, I thought over time it would pull on that middle bead and I want it to be strong here. So that's why I put this support here. But I am wondering if this support we are putting in will cause comp... Uh, What's the word I'm looking for? Complications. When we go to put this together, because I did this, it is tight here and it's hard to get my needle in there. I don't think I can get my needle through there. I don't know. I'll have to figure it out once I get to this part. Usually I always come up with alternatives of ways we can do stuff. So we'll see when we get to that point. But I do uh, think I should put another support into this one because I did it in that, in, this, in that one there and they should be matching. So I'm coming out of these four 11s here. I'm going to drop down into this three millimeter and then come out this six millimeter. Okay, so now here I am in the back, and so, let me see, did I do seven or eight? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I did seven, both sides. I'm going to pick up seven eleven O's. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, like this. Okay, slide them down straight across, I'm going to go through here. Now I have to say, if you do make this as a ring, you cannot add, there's going to be no way that you can add a ring band onto the side of this bead and that bead. And that's how you're going to do it. You're not going to be able to wear, well, I don't know, maybe if you wear it on a really big finger, but this here is like a size 12, this finger, so that would be kind of crazy to have a ring like that. And plus, they always look better elongated. It elongates your fingers, right? Going in that direction. So if you do make this into a ring, do not add the support right here. You would basically just skip this part where I'm adding the support and um, 
add the lacing on the top and then you would come out here and add the ring band and then some of you are thinking well is the stone going to fall back no it's not the only reason why I'm putting the support on the back like I said earlier if I connect this in here and if I use this middle bead and this middle bead it's going to be really tugging on this bracelet the bracelet will probably get more wear and I could chance um, this pulling apart over time so over like a long period of time that could possibly happen but with a ring that's not going to happen because you're not tugging on the sides of the ring like a bracelet gets so that'll be just fine okay so coming out here I'm going straight across through this bead and usually if you go through at an angle it's better okay so just like that I did try eight here because I did first I tried eight because when you do seven it does pull it closer together do you see it's a little, kind of close together and this here was kind of more round right but when I did eight the C beads stuck out the back higher and it was a lump so I didn't want that so I went to seven okay there are my seven seed beads slide these down they're just gonna sit here I'm gonna go through this side okay I'm not gonna pull it super tight because I'm gonna go through it again reinforce so well, actually I should pull a little bit tighter there because that's kind of loose yeah okay there's good I'm gonna go th through these so I'm just just reinforcing basically I'm, I'm gonna take this off and I'm going to use my thread to get through this bead okay and then the, I only went through that one twice and that one once so I have to pull this tight now okay and I can't attempt to go through all of these with my thread but let's see straighten this out I might have to go back to the needle there we go went through all of those through here so I have two thread paths there and then I'm gonna go you know this might be what I have to do to attach my bracelet together but I have thought of several different ways of connecting it into a bracelet so my thread just went through the next bead so I'm just going to pull it up there with my needle and there we go okay make sure that the stone is straight and pull this tight one last time I'm back and it's actually now the second day of me filming I did film how to do the lacing all around the edge here tie knots and then I went to go check my footage and it was not there I swore that I filmed it it didn't make sense when I was filming it though I did have lines going across my screen so I don't know if it was my camera or something that I did so at, at that time when I was that far into the project it was actually 9 20 at night and I filmed from 11 yesterday to almost 9 30 and I was so tired I had to give up and so I'm back today so hopefully um, everything's recorded right and I can show you all the steps you have to do. Alright, so it looks like my good footage shows me coming out of this bead here, this 6mm. And what I have to do is sew up through this 3. Okay, and then I go through this little 15 OC bead. Okay, just like that so that's what we have and now what I'm gonna do is pick up three 
fifteens, one bronze, and two of the blue elevens. Coming out of this fifteen, I sew up through this pink bead next to it, going in this direction. Because my thread's going in this direction, I have to go through that bead. I can't go through this one because my thread's going that way. So remember that. Okay? And then once you put those on, you have to literally push them down and slide them up because there will be a, a thread gap here. And if you don't do this little step and you go around, you will have loose spots. That little step there makes a difference. And after you come out of the pink bead, you have to go into the next 15 -0. Okay. And then pick up three a bronze, and then two blues. Come up through the bottom of the next three millimeter. Pat that down. Then go through the 15. And then three 11s again. Not 11s, 15s. I misspeak so much because I have so many things that I'm doing. It's it's hard to concentrate, I have to say. So, again, I pick up the same beads and I go up through this pink 3 millimeter. Tap those up so you don't have any gaps. Make sure it's tight. And go through the next 15. Pick up three 15s. A bronze and then two blues. Coming out there. Go up through this one here, the next one. Tap that down so there's no thread gap right here. And then go through the next 15. I'm going to check that, make sure it looks good. Okay, I've done four. I'm going to do this again, and I'm going to do this all the way around until I get back to where I started. Like that, up through this three millimeter, tap those beads in place, and then through this 15. And I'm just going to continue this all the way around. So I'm now at the close, so just like I have been doing, I have to come up through this pink bead, tap the beads into place there, make sure they're laying right, and then I go, well, actually, I don't go through the 15 this way. Since I have made it all the way around, I actually need to have a cross going this way, which makes it look like it's lacy, so I'm going to go underneath the very first one that I did. Okay, and then sew through the 15 0. So, what I'm doing is I'm kind of going backwards now in order to get the X look. So, then I do the three 15s again. I have my three 15s. Since I already have a bronze one here, I don't have to pick it up anymore. This is my center point, and I'm going to go through this bronze, like that, okay. I'm actually stitching to the left, which is kind of hard for me because I'm right-handed, so it's kind of annoying. And then I go up through the pink, and I always come out the left side. As hard as I try to go through the right, I can't. It's just the bead forces me to go that way. And then I go underneath those beads, and then I go through the 15. So I have to do that every time. Three 15s through this bronze. Two blues up through this three millimeter ok 
Okay, I mount the left side. And then I go underneath, right here. And then I go through the 15. And I just continue. Make sure you push your beads down. You want them to be flat. Pull it tight as you go. Pick up three 15s again. And go through this bronze. I always find that when I have seed beads like this and I have to go through like the middle one, I have to actually go down through the, the bottom one and then flip my needle up to get through the bronze. Just pick it out. Because most of the time when I just try to go straight through that bead that I want to go through, I can't get through it. Okay, I just picked up the two blue. Going out the left side again. Remember to sew. I slipped not there. Remember to sew. Where am I? There I am. Underneath here. Okay, and then through the 15. Alright, I did it three times, three X's. I think I'll do it two more times with you guys. I'm going to pick up three 15's again. And then, like I said, you can see how this, this one that I have to go through is always recessed. It's more, it's recessed more in, I guess because it's in the middle. So I go through that blue one there, just like down a little bit and then I turn my needle up so I can get through that bead there we go now it's coming out okay and then two blue and then up the next three millimeter on the left side and then underneath those yellow beads and through the 15-0 Again, three fifteens, and then I go through this bronze here, two blues, through the three millimeter, push the beads down underneath here through the 15 that's what it looks like so far keep going And then I'm going to pick up, I'm about to close, my last three 15s. I'm going to go underneath, oh this one's sticking out, about time. Through that one there, last two blue, up through this three millimeter. Always comes out the left side, no matter how hard I try to get to it right. Okay. Now what I have to do is reposition my needle. So I'm coming out that pink 3 millimeter, and I'm going to go through this 15 right here. Okay, because I'm going to go down. Then I stitch through these three 15s, and if I can, ow, I go through those three 15s and the three 11s and I get into the bottom here okay so the top is done and now I have to add a seed bead in between the blue beads to make this look more lacy to complete it so there's no gaps now because this is oval shaped the curve right here on the ends has a wider gap so you will see some thread exposed so what I did is I went through my beads, even though they're, you know, 
like Miyuki fancy name brands and stuff. I went through them and I tried to find the whitest seed beads that almost look like Delica's. See this one here? It's really thick. Some of them are like really thin. And then I just take the bead and I go through these here and pop it in. And there still is a gap there and I thought about putting two beads there but I think it would look really weird. It doesn't make sense to have two there, two there, then the rest everywhere else have one. So this is what I'm doing. Down through these two, pick up another bead, go through like that, sew down through these, and then pick up another, up through these, and then down through two. Pick up one, go through these, and I'm just following this thread path on the outer edge, picking up a bead in the gaps. Here, and I'm putting in my last bead. So I'm going to go through these three, and because I do have, well this tight, because I do have some thread exposed there, I don't want to tie knots there, so I'm just going to reposition my needle, get past this area, to the side, over here, so I can tie knots on this side. Do that. Sticky outy bead there. You can actually tie knots right here. Okay, so there we go. I'm now repositioned so I could tie my knots. I have all my beads added, and this is what it looks like. Tying knots is easy. I always show how to do this in my video in case I have any new watchers. I like to show how to complete every project I make instead of just be like, okay, now finish it off, there you go, here, leave you alone. Because I actually feel like every pro uh, project is finished a little bit differently. So I am, like we're tying the same knots, right, but like how you tie it can matter. So I'm making a loop there, going through it twice, pulling that knot down, and then I'm going through the next two seed beads, and I can tie a knot here, or I can go through a bead and tie another knot, and I'm just going to go underneath. And you want to catch this row of thread right there, make a loop, pass through it twice, and sometimes I even make my knot sit where I need it to be, and then slowly bring it down, pops into place, and then, you know, I pass through a few more beads, and if I tie a knot here, I think it might be seen because there is a little gap there. So I'm probably going to go through this bead. Yeah, and I could tie a knot there and go up through those. So I'm just going to continue going all the way around. And what I like to do, um, I tried on this one, but it's a little hard. I like to put both of my threads together, if I can, tie them in a surgeon's knot, and then put both of them through the needle and weave them through. I did that with these two. But um, I don't think I could do it with this one. So once you take this working tail and you go all the way around tying your knots, you know, uh, filling up the beads, make it, it reinforce, you want to go to your bottom thread. And I found this easier to do without the needle. And right here is that thread pass that's going through the 6 millimeter beads. And I just take my thread, see how it has like a curve to it? And I go underneath that thread and it curves upward like that. I grab my thread here, okay, make a loop, and I pass through this twice, tying a knot here, okay, I'm trying to pull that, there we go, and then pull this knot down, 
wrap it around your fingers, pull it tight, and then I just take my thread and I go through the next, here comes the cat. No, don't get on my computer. You gotta stop going that way. Over there. All right. So take the thread and go through the bead like this. And then I just go around, tie another knot here, I can go through this one, and then I go through these seed beads, I put my needle back on, and I tie like two knots in there, and I just, you know, try to t use up most of the thread, finishing this off, and that's it. Now, I did, since I had to stop filming, because my I had bad footage, or didn't have any footage, should I say, I really wanted to see what this would look like strung up, so I did string half of it just to see. And this is what it looks like. I don't know how I'm going to do the end closure there, but what I really need to figure out is how long this will be. And it does seem like if I turn this sideways, it'll be too long. So I'm probably going to have it going straight up, which I think does look better. So once I get all of these little pieces made, I will put them in here and figure out how long this is and I will come back and show you how to put all of this together all right so I think I'm gonna stop the video here um, I really wanted to do these two in one video and these two in another video and show how to put the whole thing together but because of how things are going I think it would be probably easier for me to edit these pieces individually so I might come up with more than three videos. I wanted to do two, I ended up having to do three, but I might have to do like four or five. I don't know. I really don't know until I go to edit all of this how many videos I will have. So I will stop here and I'm going to go on to show you how to make this one. This one is really fun, easy to do, and these can also be made into rings. So look out for the next video, all right? I hope that you guys are enjoying it. These videos, I feel like it's a little series that I'm doing on one piece. I, I really like this design because I feel like it's actually multiple designs all in one because we can make rings with all of these. This one's too big for a ring, but that can be worn as a pendant. And like I said in part one, I named several things that you could do with all of these components here. So um, thank you so much for watching. Please like this video, leave me a comment, and subscribe if you want to see more of my videos. Make sure you click the bell button so that you get notified whenever I upload new videos. And follow me on my social media sites. I'm on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, and Twitter. Thanks for watching.